Hello, you're watching Avenue X, where Jun Kim Good Storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. Time seems to have forgotten. 被遗忘的时光 is a 34 episode drama that's being aired on the platform Mango Television. It's directed by Xie Dongsheng, written by Zhang Tanyue, led by Lan Yingying and Fan Chengcheng. The drama started shooting in November last year, and they wrapped February this year. About a month ago, this drama actually still had its working title called 男朋友点单行 boyfriend. Pawn shop. About a month before it went live, they changed the title to the current. Time seems to have forgotten. If you go search for this original title, you're gonna find a web novel online that has the same title written by a different author. And I've looked at roughly what the story is. It's not really the same thing. So I feel that may be just a coincidence. And honestly, information regarding main creatives, how the story come about, any of its making is almost non-existent on the internet. Hunan Television also didn't promote this drama at all before it went live. It kind of just airdropped. I tried my best, couldn't find more information. That's all I know about the background story of the creation of this drama. The drama has already aired 18 episodes, and then from now on till the end, they're gonna air six episodes per week. Based on what I've seen for the first 18 episodes, I'll give it a Very high one gold mine, probably around 1.8. If the later parts of the story holds up, which I'm a little bit worried about, honestly, then it could be higher. Let me first tell you what the story is about without spoiling it too much for you. Only a little bit spoiler, and then I'm gonna tell you why I give it such a rating. This story starts from our male lead character, played by Fan Chengcheng's perspective. His girlfriend got into an accident. He is very desperate. A bus approaches him, not really knowing what he got on, until he realizes there's nobody driving it, and it ends up in front of a magical pawn shop where he meets the shopkeeper, who gave him a choice. He can get a wish fulfilled as long as he can offer a relationship that's happening in his life, a love he's had for any person. The deeper the love you have for that person, the bigger your wish can be. Once you Pawn off that relationship. Only you in this world will remember that person and what you've had. That person, including every other people in your life who's known about you having that relationship with that person, will all forget about it completely. All hard evidence of you ever had that relationship with that person will get erased, such as a photograph where both of you are in the photograph now. Only you. So that's how it works with this magical pawn shop. So he pawned off his relationship with this girl to save this girl. And it did happen. The girl came back alive, and then forgot about him. Three years later, they meet again. Things start to happen. <laughs> okay, that's how the story starts, and not gonna spoil it anymore. If you've watched Ba Hao Dang Pu, you can see the similarity of the story setup. After introducing you to the rough plotline, let me tell you what is great and not so ideal about this drama. I will tell you the not so ideal part first. Number one is I feel the 34 episodes. Length is still a little bit too much. I can feel a clear dropping off of the pacing and too much back and forth of the same thing, sort of flipping the pancake thing happening. From say about episode 11, 12 to 18, and I'm worried about if that continues happening till the end, it just may not make it that entertaining to watch. And this is a common problem with a lot of Chinese dramas: is they dare not make it too short. They feel short drama wouldn't make a good. ROI, which is really not the case. Think about Under the Skin. If they made it 30 episodes with the same content, I guarantee you, it's not gonna be as good as it is now. Problem number two is with what has already happened in the story, we can see a lot of buried clues about different people's previous history before the story started. A clue here and there about more things happened. We as audiences are the same as the male actor in terms of we don't know the full picture of this whole magical thing, how it all started, how it all works, who had what relationship with what people, who pawned off what. And this is gonna definitely you have to you know like pay that off at the end. And this drama so far has already had too many of those clues of a lot of characters. You almost feel this person has some secret, that person has some secret. I'm just a little bit worried about in terms of how they can fully play this out in the next 16 episodes and first make it make sense and then making. Dramatically exciting, because for this type of mystery setup, at least I think you should deliver an ending that has 
an element of surprise. So I'm worried about the quality of pulling out all the clues you've already buried at the end and putting them together and making that make sense, but at the same time, interesting to watch. Feeling it may fail. Pray, pray it doesn't. Don't make me waste my time watching 30 episodes until the end finding things don't connect. That would be really, really sad. Now let's talk about the good things. The drama has more good things than bad things. First, I like the overall production quality and its style. You don't need to worry about its technical things. Camera, editing, color grading, skin smoothing, no. Original voice, yes. And it has its own style. It wants to create that coherent story space. You really can feel that. Also, it has a couple of really well-written songs. It also has very interesting production design of those essentially important sets. I mean the pawn shop. Because it's magical. You need to give it that look and feel. And this drama did it really well. I love the interior, the furniture, the color, the lighting, the windows. The idea of containing your memory of that pawned off relationship in the crystal colorful bell on display that has a name attached to it. And when something happens to that, the bell starts to swing and making a noise. The visualization of the magical thing happening at the pawn shop is very well done. Number two, for this particular type of pulling off something to get what you want in life, whether it's success, money, fame, all that, immediately you get the idea is to criticize the human greed. It does exist in this drama and some characters are very vocal about that. But this drama overall actually doesn't take the very morally sort of superior high ground of judging the characters of what they do, what they sell off for things. In a way, it's like a combination of some of the mango television drama this year, gourmet uh, element drama, daily life, yin huo qi, the smoke and fire scent of life. You've seen already this year in mango television. It has those dramas element plus a little bit mystery and magic. Magic. It combines that. It's almost like the pawn shop idea is used as a plot device to show you the normal little things in people's life that's worth protecting, friendship, kingship, the little happiness in life, then say the actual fantastical element. And honestly, by this point, first 18 episodes, it's not a romantic story. The whole I love you so much that to save you, I make you forget about me thing isn't the most tear-jerking and moving part of the story. It's actually a couple of other things, like uh, a friendship thing in this drama. Won't spoil it for you. That really was the most painful emotional moment so far in this drama. So my second point basically is, maybe on paper, when you look at the synopsis of the story, you think it's one type of story. But when you actually go and watch it, it's different. And I find it's more intriguing this way. Then the third thing, definitely have to talk about acting. Like Li Zonghan's acting, he's the shopkeeper. If it wasn't him, it wouldn't be that interesting. And he actually has a very complicated personal plot. I hope they can conclude that well. Then let's talk about the two leads, Lan Yingying and Fan Chengcheng. Lan Yingying, she's been around for a long time actually. She made herself known first, widely in China as Huan Bi in Zhen Huan Zhuan. Ever since then, she's been around and she's had ups and downs and hardly ever getting a very important main role. As a professional actress, she's pretty good at doing what she does. But in another way, she's less of a, let's say, easy to fall in love actress. You can see that online general public's sort of view of this actress is they all agree professionally she's pretty good, but somehow she just often doesn't get very loved by people. People are very picky about her. Guan Zhong Yuan, the Yuan Feng with audiences. Some people, they may not be the greatest actors or actresses, but when they show up on camera, people just like them. And you can't quite quantify that why exactly. I think Lan Yingying is one of those actresses who really hasn't done anything wrong at all, but somehow her Guan Zhong Yuan is always lacking. And if you watch this drama, you also see that a lot of people would criticize some of the things the characters does in this drama and put that on her and saying she's not likable, which, <laughs> you know, anybody playing this role would be doing the same thing. And, and, you know, that probably is always questionable. Anyway, in this drama, she performed to my expectation. She did it pretty well. And she actually works off a pretty good chemistry with Fan Cheng Cheng, which was something I totally didn't expect. So on her end, I'm happy with her performance. Her character is definitely not the most ideal female role in this world, and she does things that may be questionable. Honestly, if you have a saint 
woman who doesn't have any desires and who doesn't do anything wrong throughout a drama, then why do you have her as a character? <laughs> she literally doesn't have anything worth telling about anyway. Then let's focus on Fan Cheng Cheng because he is the surprise. I haven't heard about this project before. It told everybody we're gonna come out and I caught the news. Oh, there's a mango drama with Lan Yingying and Fan Cheng Cheng. Interesting end. What a catastrophe. <laughs> because in my head, Lan Yingying belongs to one type of actor and actress. The professional ones and Fan Chengcheng, idol. In his previous dramas, if you've watched them, if I tell you honestly how I would comment on his acting in those dramas, uh, his fans will murder me. And my prejudice is, is this going to be another idol drama pairing with a professional trying to hold this person up for whatever purpose they make it for the fandom? You know, like it just feels like that. But then when the drama started, after a couple of scenes, I was like, oh, it's not that at all. It's actually a serious drama that's focused on the story itself. And all the actors and actresses are in this drama to serve the story, not the other way around. On the most superficial level of that is he no longer looks like a posh idol. And because this role needs to be rooted in the reality, he's a construction site worker, he gets super tanned, he's not rich at all, he lives in a dormitory. They really make the actor look fitting. He got very tanned, very dark foundation, much darker than his real skin color, very tight buzz cut to the point that it doesn't flatter your face in any way. So basically using hair to make you look better doesn't happen in this drama for the male lead. Also his clothes really does look like super cheap stuff that you can buy on a night market. He really made himself as little and as invisible as possible so that his role become visible. His role serves the story, nor the story serving Fan Cheng Cheng. Apart from the look, he really learned to relax in front of a camera this time. In pretty much every scene, he looks like a normal human, not an idol who's trying to act, who's thinking. Should I be acting happy, sad, angry? And there's a camera looking at me. Should I do the facial expression? Is that gonna make me look bad? That is not in this drama. He really is in his characters, in the moments, and he has all those little expressions. You almost forget number one is his Fan Cheng Cheng, <laughs> number two is his acting. Maybe that's in the DNA, who knows, you know, he, he's got that sister actress who is so famous in China. Maybe the director is super good at eliciting performance out of actors, who knows. He really is different from everything he's done before. He's not yet at any level that's worth you going, wow, great talent, super good acting, but he's so much better than before. You can categorize him now as a real actor in this drama. That just makes me feel so, so much more about this drama, <laughs> Chase the Light. After watching, time seems to have forgotten and what Fan Cheng Cheng can do, and with what I know Wang Anyu can do, I just want to watch Chase the Light. Ah! And now in my head, I've added Chase the Light to Hard Drive to Steel List. First one was Guardian. All the special feature footage people have for Guardian in that company's hard drive, I want to steal. Now, if Chase the Light doesn't see the light in the future, it will be on that list. It will give me motivation to try to make myself super rich in the future so that I can literally go and just buy the company who makes this drama if it doesn't get aired so that I can own all their hard drive. And I'm just going to put it on my big home theater and watch it as raw footage. <laughs> I have one more motivation, okay, <laughs> for trying to make it big in this world so that I can, so that I can do that. At the end of this video, I would emphasize again that this drama probably is not the greatest drama out there and because it has so many more competitions coming in this week, new dramas showing. Unless you're a fan of either of the leads, it probably isn't your first choice, but you can keep it on your short list when you have time to just go in and check out. Oh, and it has a lot of food cooking because it has restaurants, chefs, all kinds of development of a dish. <laughs> Don't watch it when you're on diet at night when you're hungry. That should be the end of this video on Time Seems to Have Forgotten. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.